How are guys? How are you guys doing? Today I decided to make a small outline of infective endocarditis. I'll try to keep it within five minutes and later on you can use this outline to further read the textbooks, refer to the lecture notes and build your knowledge on that. All right. So what is infective endocarditis? The name speak for itself. It's an infection of the endocardium of the heart. Simple as that. Firstly, we'll talk about who are the people who are at risk of getting this. I personally like to categorize and classify things that makes my life easy and that will make your life easy as well. So I like to categorize these risk groups into three main areas. One, some people who have something abnormal happening in their hearts. For an example, people with valvular heart surgery, valvular heart lesions, people who have undergone heart surgeries like you know valve replacements, maybe it's a prosthetic valve, mechanical valve, all that stuff. Thirdly, people who have a damaged endocardium, endocardium, maybe they had a history of rheumatic fever, things like that. Yeah, so that's the first risk group, something abnormal in the heart. The second risk group are the people who are at risk of different organisms entering the bloodstream. So, for example, intravenous drug users, people who inject various drugs into their bloods are at risk of the organisms entering the bloodstream. And on a side note, these people are more likely to get uh, infective endocarditis affecting right side of the heart because they inject the veins and blood goes to the right side of the heart first. Yeah, and of course, the people who are uh, undergoing different procedures, maybe dental procedures, urological procedures, surgeries and whatnot, the things that may put them at risk of different organisms entering the bloodstream, like you know, causing bacteremia. So those things will put them at risk. And third risk group, are the people who are generally weak, who are more likely to get infections. Maybe they have immunodeficiencies, acquired immunodeficiencies, undergoing chemotherapy as such. And of course, on uh, immunosuppressant therapy for reason various uh, autoimmune diseases. All right, so risk group three, something abnormal with the heart, risk of organisms entering the blood, and risk and generally uh, immunocompromised people. So those are the risk groups. And how does, and secondly, we'll talk about how does this infective endocarditis patients will present to you. So they will present as how any other infection will present. They'll have fever, they'll be unwell with, you know, infective symptoms, nausea, fatigue, lethargy, and all that. The classic would be fever with a new onset murmur, high suspicion of infective endocarditis. And secondly, something classic is that, you know, there's an infection of the heart and, you know, heart pumps blood everywhere. So they are in risk of uh, having, shooting up septic emboli, immune complexes, all this stuff that can go through the body and get deposited in different areas and that can cause various signs and symptoms. Something classic you might have heard of is this is Osler's nose, Janvey lesions and uh, splinter hemorrhages as such. And the other thing is that when they shoot up septic emboli they can get deposited in different places and cause infections in other sites septic arthritis brain abscess and whatnot it goes on and it's also uh worth to notice that infective endocarditis people have uh splenomegaly in most cases as well and yeah so that's some that's how they present and how you how do you diagnose them so Mainly, we talk about two main things. One, you look at the heart to see if, are there any vegetations or you know, is there something abnormal going on there. And how do you do that? You do an echocardiogram. It could be a transthoracic one. It could be a transesophageal one. The transesophageal ones are more sensitive, but the transthoracic ones are easy to do. If you see vegetations, high likely to be infective endocarditis. So yeah, so one, you look at the heart. The second one, you look in the blood. You do blood cultures to catch these organisms that causes this. And you do a lot of blood cultures. And mainly when they're having fever spikes, or chills and rigors, it makes the culture more likely to catch something. So two main things. Look at the heart, look at the blood. Echocardiograms and blood cultures. And also, secondly, there's this. Thirdly, there's a lot of other things that support an infection like inflammatory markers and all that so those things are there as well i think the there's a criteria for that that's duke's criteria you can look it up so mainly the echo and the blood cultures and then the supporting evidence and of course history and examination and all that stuff as well yeah 
and so we talked about the risk groups we talked about presentation we talked about how we diagnose and how do you treat you treat as you treat any other infection you give them antibiotics and you first give them broad spectrum and when you get culture positives and sensitivities you change into the you know the relevant sensitive good antibiotics so that's one thing and if the vegetation is extensive if the heart is getting damaged the surgeons have a role to play the cardiothoracic guys they could you know take the vegetations out or repair the heart and i'm, I'm not exactly sure but they have do have a role to play if the vegetation is extensive so that's a specific treatment of course there's supportive treatment like you know if and identification of complications and treating them and also if they're really unwell it, it will obviously start with resuscitation oh uh, so yeah uh, just when i have an approach to any treatment my first would be are they really unwell you resuscitate them there's disease specific treatment and there's supportive treatment so those three things you can speak on those three lines yeah uh, and finally just a little bit about preventing infective endocarditis is that you identify the high risk groups you educate them and whenever they are undergoing procedures and all you give them prophylactic antibiotics so that's a very very brief outline of infective endocarditis of course this will not be enough for your exams and all that stuff and that in any case this is not clinical advice or anything this is just a small outline so you can just understanding it a bit simpler and you can read your books speak with your senior doctors and articles and all that stuff and build your knowledge on that so we'll have a very broad knowledge to approach this all right guys cheers see you in the next